Welcome to Kermit Uncut. I did a blog a few weeks ago asking where you go to get your film education. Did you go to a special course? Did you get it from watching television, introductions to movies? Did you get it from websites? Loads and loads of responses from you. I'm going to take this opportunity to just run down some of your responses. Start with this from Douglas Pouch. I grew up with Movie Drone, Fangoria, Cinefix, and a handful of making of documentaries that sporadically cropped up on TV. Now, anyone who owns a DVD or Blu ray player of their favourite film will often get lavish documentaries, production notes, storyboards, FX shorts, and best of all, commentaries. Now, a number of people brought up DVDs and Blu ray commentaries. This from John M. I was lucky enough to have film studies as part of my college course in 1998. From there I read books and also remember listening to the things Mark Cousins had to say when he introduced films. Then came DVD, the special features, the director's commentaries. This added so much to everything I wanted to learn about film. Now, in the days of streaming services such as Netflix and Amazon, we've lost that enrichment that DVD gave us. A similar point is made by Sean J. These days I get most of my info from reading books or from DVD and Blu-ray commentaries, intros or extras. I also frequent websites like Senses of Cinema, Midnight Eye or No Film School. There are some really good video essayists about too. I think my favourite would be Every Frame a Painting on Vimeo. That was a name that came up several times. This from I'm an FBI agent. Also a huge shout out to the brilliant YouTube channel Every Frame a Painting. One of the main themes of my blog was how much we all miss movie drone, how important it was to so many people. Many of you posted about this. This from Babyface Michael. I grew up with movie drone, as many did. It recognised that cinema is a profound art medium capable of every facet of human emotion. We need a modern version where people can see the esoteric and strange. How often do the TV channels show black and white or silent movies, the films I grew up with? This really caught my eye. This is from Jan. I have a great interest in this as I was asked 10 years ago to teach A-level film studies as I had a drama background. Film education has had to fight hard to eke out a space anywhere. YouTube has potential, BBC4 helps occasionally, Mark Cousins' history of film was seminal, but ultimately we have to make people inquisitive by making sure they see the films from the canon. Movie Drone was magnificent for this because it educated and respected its viewers whilst being passionate and utterly serious about its mission to hold up film as art. Hear, hear. Here are a few others. This from David Wake. I learnt at the University Film Club three linked films a week and it's an environment that enabled everyone to make the connections themselves. This from LMDH26, not easy to pronounce, but an interesting point. Currently, the on-demand film streaming website Movie is my favourite way of discovering unusual cult, classic and experimental films. Since becoming a member, I've discovered a variety of wonderful films that I had previously never heard of or come across. Now, another name that came up several times in your responses was that of Roger Ebert. This is from P. Jim. I started with the textbook Understanding Movies as it was recommended by Roger Ebert, then studied books like How to Read a Film and the Excellent Film Art and Introduction. And this from Jack Lee. I'm a big fan of Roger Ebert. For me, he's the key to understanding anything in a film you're unsure about. Extremely readable when it comes to a film's meaning and confusing plot lines. I actually took film studies for my GCSEs and yesterday, found out that I'd received an A star, helped by my teacher who I had for the first year. We had to write a few reviews of films of our choice and I often used Roger Ebert's style. Congratulations. Just a few to finish off. This from Palax. I have actually just completed the NFTS Explore filmmaking course on FutureLearn, which I spoke about on the blog. I've had a rabid interest in film for a while now, but I didn't really have a good grasp on the more technical side, how films are conceived, made, financed. And the FutureLearn course is a great introduction to that kind of thing. Palax also flags up sight and sound as being important, as did many of you. This, for example, from Simon Gray. It has the best range of articles with great depth and the best writing which I've come across in any magazine concerning popular culture. It also has a great balance of focus on the modern and the historical. I think anyone seriously interested in film should be reading this. I'm going to leave you finally with this comment from Rachel on the subject of where one should get one's film learning. Buy, borrow, steal or acquire a camera and figure it out for yourself. It worked for Derek Jarman and it worked for David Lynch. By watching existing films you'll be able to figure out what's to be avoided and what's been done before.